Welcome everyone to uh, the webinar, Slay the Sugar. Let's go ahead and get started. And I will do a screen here, share uh, here to get started. Welcome, welcome to Four Strategies to Slay the Sugar. Not even just this holiday season, but these are tips for all year round. So let's go ahead and get started. Well, welcome everybody. My name is Lori Kors. Some of you know me, some don't. I am a certified health coach, um, uh, nutrition and dietetics technician registered uh, with the American Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics and also a weight management specialist. And I'm with Seeds of Change Nutrition. I am the owner. Um, I am a mother grandmother, very proud of, of that, love spending time with my family, and I love talking all things health and wellness and sugar. So many people have trouble with it. It's not your fault. It's everywhere, and the food makers know it, right? So I also have experience uh, over 10 years in the organic food industry, um, and I just see that sugar is probably the biggest topic people uh, want to learn more about and how to avoid it, right? So we know that sugar affects your health and your mood. Um, it is being studied, a lot of studies coming out too that um, it actually um, makes anxiety and depression worse. You know, those are things that sugar is a, a, a stimulant and kind of like, you know, especially if you mix that with coffee, you know, you get this, you get this high and then you come down and it just creates a lot of anxiety in your body and of course our mood. So there are a lot of, um, if you're dealing with some um, depression, anxiety, things like that, cutting back on sugar may help stabilize that um, for you. It might be something to try and to, to um, see if it does help. Um, Right. We think it's a pick me up, but in reality, it, you know, it causes in the moment it can, it can pick you up. Right. And then in a lot of different ways, and then boom, uh, maybe even a half hour, hour later, you might have stomach, you might bloating. Um, you might, you know, in a little bit, you get a crash and you're like, oh, why did I do that? It felt good in the moment. Just like all, all, all kinds of things, right. Retail therapy, um, so why people use drugs, you know, they're trying to get that high. Um, and then there's always that crash. Um, it, sugar is very, it's high inflammatory um, that creates aches and pains in our joints, um, uh, chronic health issues, uh, you know, and they're saying too that cholesterol uh, is also related to sugar, not so much eggs and all of that. But there's a lot of research coming out um, that sugar is actually more of the issue than, um, say, eggs or, or things like that, um, chronic illnesses. And there's something called type 3 diabetes. I don't know if anyone's heard of that, but that is um, when you have so much sugar, uh, it's a form of like diabetes in your brain. So it's gotten to the point where it's affecting the nerve endings in your brain and its brain, its inflammation uh, in your, uh, in the um, heart, the uh, nerves and the, and the blood vessels in your brain uh, can cause dementia, um, Alzheimer's, things like that. So it's just not our friend, right? And then the why I have here, it wreaks havoc in your liver. Your liver for, um, performs about 500 functions every day. It's your largest, largest organ in your body. It filters blood. Uh, it's a part of your digestive system. It creates bile. And you know, the bile is stored in your gallbladder and it helps emulsify fats to help digest uh, your fats. Uh, it also stores some sugar, uh, some glycogen. And so when your blood sugars dip, the liver is the one that will release some blood, uh, some sugar into your bloodstream to stabilize your blood sugar. So it works hand in hand with your pancreas when it's healthy, right? So we want to keep the liver very healthy. It um, detoxes, it's the detoxing uh, organ of your body. 
Um, so if you're on a lot of um, over-the-counter medications, prescription meds, of course, alcohol, we all know that affects our liver, um, environmental toxins, all kinds of things um, get filtered and, and uh, detoxified from the liver. Uh, it stores vitamins and minerals, protein, synthesis, all kinds of things, you guys. So we want to keep our liver healthy. And when we have um, too much sugar in our diet and it accumulates, we can get what is known as non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And it's really like uh, just kind of scars up the liver tissue. Um, and we just don't want that. We just don't, we want to keep our liver healthy and supple and um, the, uh, you know, just flowing correctly. So when we cut down on our sugars, we really help our liver as well. Um, we really want to keep that healthy. The good news is when you give your liver and even any other organ, but especially your liver, if you can give that a break, uh, reducing your alcohol and sugar, um, alcohol and sugars, um, when you give it a chance, it can rebuild itself. So that's the good news. The good news, all of this that I just shared, I'm sharing it not to depress you, but it's to um, give you hope that this is all, these are all things that are, are controllable. That's what I'm trying to say. All right. Okay. So how do you think sugar is affecting you the most? Is it affecting, um, and the reason why I ask that is for awareness so that when you do start cutting back on sugar, you can see, um, if you know how it's affecting you, you can see how, um, reducing it makes you feel better. So it could be, uh, maybe, uh, anxiety and depression. Maybe that is, maybe that gets better. Maybe of course you lose some weight, right? Maybe your joints aren't as stiff. You don't have as many headaches, um, that kind of thing. So, um, think about how is sugar affecting you, um, when you eat a lot of it and it could even be you guys, it's even mental and just uh, a lot of times we beat ourselves up, but we're not going to do that. Uh, again, the food makers food industry has made it very clear that, um, they do focus groups to, um, see what different recipes of their cookies and cakes and all of that. What is the bliss point of the product? Um, you know, they have people say, oh, this, you know, like maybe B, choice B was the um, one that I just loved. And the more people that say, oh, recipe B was wonderful, then they know, hey, we're hitting a bliss point in people's brains. Um, and that's the one we're going to go with. And so they know what they're doing. They know it's addictive and it's a moneymaker. So how is sugar affecting you the most? When you know that, then you're going to see a positive change when you start reducing it. Okay. So now that we know how it's affecting us and what it can do, what let's change the game and get our power back, right? It makes us think, yeah, I don't want to have stiff joints anymore. And I want to be able to breathe and um, uh, play with my grandkids and, and all of that. So um, the first strategy, so we're going to go through four strategies and how you can reduce your sugar. Okay. It's detoxing and resetting your taste buds. So you guys, when, um, when you are, um, taking in a lot of sugar, your taste buds get used to that, right? Your taste buds get used to it. And there's a, um, reward center in your brain and, um, it's keeping your brain wired for sugar, wired for more. And, you know, there's study published um, saying that sweet foods and sugar can be more addictive than a cocaine. Um, so this was, you know, performed on animals um, and intense sweetness can um, surpass a cocaine brain reward, um, even in addicted individuals crazy craziness. And, and the thing is that sugar is legal, right? So we have access it to access to it everywhere. It's legal and right. Like unlike cocaine. So we are dealing with some serious stuff here. Now, my story, and the reason why I have 
a can of Diet Coke here, and I'm not just picking on that brand, uh, any brand of diet soda, but this was my brand of choice back in the day. This, you guys, this was about 20 years ago. Um, I was drinking probably at least three a day. It was my coffee in the morning. It was, you know, lunch and dinner. And I was drinking a lot of it. And I'm telling you what, that kept my taste buds craving carbohydrates. Um, it was just, it's addictive that, um, I think it's this aspartame is still in there maybe, but, um, studies were just coming out back then about how it can create neurological problems. And so it was kind of on my radar, but I was so addicted to it that I was like, Oh, nothing's going to happen to me. And it did. So I, I got a, um, a health condition and a really scary one. It was an autoimmune issue. And it's, there's a lot, that is a whole different webinar. Actually, I could go on a whole story there, but suffice it to say that don't wait until a health scare before you start making changes to your health. Don't do what I did. I was on a very um, high protein, uh, high inflammatory diet. I didn't really have any vegetables in my diet eating a lot of red meat, drinking this diet soda, um, stress in my life. And it was all like a perfect storm to have something happen. And for me, it was autoimmune. So I knew enough. I hadn't been into nutrition school or anything like that yet, but I knew enough to think, and I read an article, this diet soda is not good. And so when I got this diagnosis, I immediately, I was scared and I immediately stopped drinking it and I was trying to find alternatives. So what I ended up doing is I went to unsweet iced tea. Um, and I'll tell you, it was so refreshing. Um, it gave me that little bit of a lift, right? But there's no calories. Um, I, I went cold turkey. I didn't put any sugar in it. I just went cold turkey. And I will tell you what, that reset my taste buds. And when that, when I did that, I noticed right away that my cravings for sugar, for carbohydrates, especially refined ones went way down. I had little kids at home. I was eating after them. I was just mindlessly, you know, eating, oh, I'm giving you goldfish crackers. I'm going to take some, you know, I'm giving you these little, um, animal crackers. I'll take some too, you know, and I'm just popping those in my mouth, my mouth as I'm chasing them around and, and everything. It was really some good days, but at the same time, <laughs> my health was really suffering because I wasn't paying attention to it. So that's my story is, you know, these diet drinks and artificial sweeteners, they can be toted as almost health foods because they just don't have any calories. It's not going to matter, but you guys, they are um, the effect in your brain and your taste buds is they are about a hundred. Sometimes I've read two, 300 times sweeter than regular sugar. And so we need to get these out of our diets um, along with um, those refined carbohydrates. And when you start doing that, you're going to see a decline. If you can even do it for three to five days, you're going to see a decline in your, um, your, uh, I guess, cravings, right, for sugar, because your taste buds are going to change, and it's going to change um, and make your reward center more sensitive to sugar, which is what we want. So a little bit of sugar will go a long way. Instead of you, um, you know, once it gets the sugar, it needs more and more to get that reward, right? Okay, so here's something you can do, something kind of fun, simple, easy, that you can do all year round to make sure your taste buds are sensitive. So you can do the apple taste, taste, taste bud challenge. Um, and what you do is that's my gala apple sitting there. Uh, it's one of my favorite apples and you can take, you don't want something too sweet or too tart, um, but you chew uh, probably half an apple and just chew it really, really well. And then say to yourself, is this, um, it's level of sweetness between one and 10, one being 
this apple is not sweet at all to 10. Wow, I'm really enjoying this apple. It tastes really sweet to me. It could be like dessert. Um, so if, you're, if your test results come um, out to one to six, your, your taste buds probably need a reset. So you want to stay off sugar, artificial sweeteners um, for about three to at least three to five days. If you can do it longer, of course, the better. And, and we don't want to do that and then get back on a boatload of sugar again. That's like, why even do that? And then take in the apple again and see if your taste buds are reset. And once they're reset, you know, try to keep that just, you know, try to keep that and um, try to eat more, um, you know, whole foods and things like that uh, to satisfy um, your, your nutritional needs. Okay. Number two, we need to detox our mindset. So when you hear um, cutting back on sugar and you hear things like that, it's scary, isn't it? It's kind of scary. It's like, oh, I'm going to be so like any diet. That is why stop the dieting because it doesn't work. Diets do not work. Um, it's a lifestyle habit change that is going to work. So um, we need to detox our mindsets even before we start making changes. So um, what, what we can do, excuse me, let me get a sip here. I'm talking too fast. Okay. So we want to beat this deprived mindset, especially when it comes to sugar. Um, things like, I do have a choice. I could have, I could have that um, Danish sitting there on the counter. First of all, if it doesn't have to sit on the counter, please just get rid of it. I know some of you have other family members that want the Danish and they're like, I'm not going to give that up because of you. Okay. Well, maybe you, you all can talk about boundaries and Hey, maybe you want to eat it, but I'm really trying to make some changes. So don't, you know, help me if you don't want to, you know what I'm saying? Y'all can figure out how that works for you. Um, anyway, you do have a choice to eat that food. You can have it any time, but you can also choose not to have that food at this time. You know, that's why the hands were like that, right? And I've heard people say, you know, when you say that's not my food, you know, that gives you power. That's you're not deprived. You're saying I am making the choice. That's just not my food right now. Um, and I love this picture because your body your body will love you for saying no. And even if you say no half the time, all of those choices are going to add up in your favor, in, in your body's favor. And if nothing else, think I am doing something wonderful for my body by making that choice not to eat that refined carbohydrate, that sugar, right? Instead, what you're depriving yourself of this whole shift, you're depriving yourself of um, a greater risk of getting diabetes. You're uh, depriving yourself of brain fog, heart issues down the line, neuropathy problems. Who wants neuropathy issues? Joint pain, cancers, that type three diabetes, dementia, um, being out of breath, walking up the stairs, trying to play with your kids. You're depriving yourself of fatigue and up and down blood sugar issues, right? And if there's something else mindset wise that works for you, then go ahead and write it down on an index card and like put it on your refrigerator somewhere where um, where you're going to see it and, and really help keep you in that frame of mind, right? Okay, stress eating. So stress can lead to stress eating. It can lead to other... <laughs> Other habits, um, sometimes stress people don't eat at all, and that's not good either, right? They don't eat at all, or they eat too much, or they're um, retail therapy people, or they could go to drugs, alcohol, there's all kinds of things, right? We all deal with stress in different ways. Um, so the definition of stress is the important significance or emphasis placed on something. 
So stress, a lot of times, it's all in our minds. I mean, honestly, we there are ways you can turn that off. There are healthy ways to deal with it. Um, so some healthier ways to deal with stress are to move. And the reason why that is, is um, true is because when um, stress, you know, the stress we have today is very different than what we had in the beginning of time. We had the stress of physically getting away from something. So our body still acts like that. So when we get stressed, um, whether it's, um, you know, the boss is yelling at me or, wow, there's a Doberman pincher coming at me. I think it's going to attack me. I need to run, which is, you know, either way, it's creating the same response in our body. And so our bodies were made to run in times of stress. And so that's why movement is so stress reducing, um, taking a walk, um, going to the gym, gardening, just like getting yourself moving somewhere somehow um, can really help reduce stress because that's what we were designed to do is to use the cortisol um, that is coming up in our bodies and we're using it to run, right? So just move, just do something and move. Um, get, get yourself out of the situation for a while, even mentally and come back to it. Um, journaling. That's one of my favorite things to do. Um, I like to journal. I like to have devotionals, some um, pieces that are very um, inspiring and help with your mindset. Um, books, self-help books, that kind of thing can really help. And breathe, you guys, breathe. Uh, you can do box breathing, which is breathe in, breathe in four for a count of four, hold it for four and breathe out for four. That just calmed me down. <laughs> so do some breathing. Um, stop, set a reminder on your phone, whatever um, to help you do that. Um, also, just to remind you, set boundaries. Are there boundaries? Are you doing too much? Are you a people pleaser? Are you just doing too much for people, not taking enough time for yourself um, to do some self-care, to build in that time? And I know if you have small, small children, this is hard, but can you um, build in a little bit of time early in the morning, late at, later at night when the kids go to bed for you, to feed you? Um, that just is so helpful. Can you can you make yourself a healthy meal each day to respect your body, just to take care of you, right? Um, set boundaries are there. Uh, stressful relationships, you need to take some charge of um, whatever it is, right? You just ask yourself, what is stressing me out? And what can I control? Can I control my response to things instead of reacting? Can I think about it and respond? Can I use assertive speech to convey my feelings? You know, there's all kinds of things, um, but we want to deal with the emotions, deal with the actual emotions instead of going to food uh, to um, cover that up, right? Okay, right. So another mindset what I mentioned earlier is what is your why for making healthier choices right now? Because when the, when push comes to shove and it gets really tough and you're in tough situations, you can anchor yourself to that why. And you can say, no, I still want to lose a few more, whatever pounds. Um, no, my A1C is still too high and eating that pie is not going to get me to my, um, my, you know, uh, health, the health marker that I want my A1C levels. Um, that's not going to help me play with my grandkids. I can choose something healthier for my body that actually fuels my body and nourishes it. And I'm going to be better for it. Right. So it's just these 
things, taking some time to really sit with yourself and get your mind um, powerful. Okay, number three, strategy, plan ahead. Now, this can look like a lot of different things. Um, it's right. So when you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Benjamin Franklin, thank you, because it's so true, isn't it? Um, so ways that you can plan ahead to set yourself up. Um, you know, we all get hangry. Uh, you know, there's we have very limited capacity in the our frontal brain cortex. Um, it's a decision maker. It's where our willpower is and um, our emotional processor. So you can imagine we have no willpower. Our willpower is like this, right? And especially at the end of the day, when you're stressed out from work and you haven't eaten enough, you haven't taken enough time for yourself during the day, you get home. And if you have nothing planned for dinner, you're going to order pizza out. You're going to go through the drive-through. You're going to, uh, a lot of people will um, pop a bag of popcorn, eat a big bowl of the sugary cereals and call it a night because they just don't have the capacity. And it's, it's a true thing. It's, it's not really, it's not your fault. I mean, if you, it's the way your brain is made. However, knowing that you are going to fail if you don't plan ahead. So an ounce of prevention really is a pound of cure. So the more you can plan um, to have healthy choices in your house, whether it's meals or ingredients that you can put together for snacks and meals, the better off you are. It really will help you in the long run. Um, when going to a potluck during the holidays, um, you know, take something healthy with you that you know you can eat and you're going to enjoy. Wear tighter clothing so um, you know you're not swimming in your jeans or, or a big, um, you know, a dress that's not as tight fitting um, so that you can expand. You know, a lot of people I hear, oh, I'm going to wear sweats to Thanksgiving. Okay, that's your choice. But, you know, um, I use my jeans to tell me how much I weigh. I, I only know how much I weigh when I go to the doctor's office. So I can just tell by how my jeans are fitting every day. Um, before you go to a potluck, you're bringing your healthy dish, but you can kind of see what the choices are. And if, you know, your friend Susie brought that seven layer dessert that you just have to have, I get that. Um, you're, you can like, well, I'm going to load up on the salads and the good thing that I brought and maybe that, oh, that looks good. This little fruit thing or whatever vegetables. Um, and then you can take your little thing of Susie's seven layer, whatever. Uh, so you don't feel deprived, um, but you're not going overboard. Um, of course, you don't want to go hungry to the grocery store or when eating out, your blood sugars are low and you are going to just go for the lasagna. Another tip is um, with that, when you go to eat out, you be the first one to order because uh, if you <laughs> hear what everyone else orders, you're going to order that lasagna. I can guarantee you. Um, and just enjoy it and focus on the people, not as much the food. Um, right. Have a plan of action mentally when you go to parties or in different restaurants and keep a food journal. Um, it can help you see your trends. You can um, journal meals ahead. It's it's really a great way to keep accountable to yourself. Okay, um, bonus tips for uh, emotional eating. You know, um, if you just can't take away a lot of sugar right now, start adding healthy foods in. Start adding vegetables into your diet. Whole foods, it's gonna give you more fiber, vitamins and minerals. Um, your body is actually going to be nourished the way it wants to, and your cravings should start to go down. Um, please do not diet. They don't work. They set you up for a failure. I'm going to do this for 30 days, and then I get to go back to normal. Why even bother? Why even bother? And when you gain and lose weight all the time, don't you usually end up gaining more 
And that's because your metabolism is all messed up, right? It's just really bad on your body. Um, think before you eat is basically halt. We go more into that in some of my programs. Um, do one change at a time. If you do all the things, you're going to get overwhelmed and you're going to stop doing everything, right? That's with anything. I, I get that in my business. I, I get that in all kinds of things. I get analysis paralysis and I just don't do anything. Um, if you're bored, this is probably the number one thing I hear is I eat late at night. Well, that's typically people that are high productive people and they're used to being busy and active during the day. And then when they get home, it's it's like, it's quiet, it's calm, and there's not as much going on and their minds are still like this. And so they still want something to do. So if that's, if that happens to you, find something else to do. How else can you keep yourself um, entertained? Um, how can you change up your routine instead of having dinner, turning on the TV, sitting there? Uh, I had a client once, she she loved M&Ms. And so she would sit there and watch TV. She was a newly retired bank executive and she was used very good at her job and used to being very productive. So she would sit on her couch. She's like, Lori, I just pop M&Ms in my mouth, right? While I'm watching TV, you're not even really enjoying them or people, you know, popcorn, right? And you're just eating all these carbs sitting there on the couch so what is something else you can do to, uh, we found, she and I found other ways that work for her to, to stop that habit. Okay, so a lot of you, this that I did this originally the day after Halloween, and I kept hearing, uh, I literally kept hearing people say, oh, I have a Halloween hangover. <laughs> I ate too much sugar. So uh, you're trying to be really good, but you went for half the cake. You really didn't want to, but you just couldn't resist. It's been a bad day or you have that, you had that bowl of candy sitting there and you just, you just couldn't help it. Right. And you're, you're feeling physically awful and also mentally probably beating yourself up. Um, first of all, if you can toss out any leftover candy, uh, my parents, for instance, donated their candy to the YMCA for the, you know kids, uh, there are a lot of places you could donate to. Not that I'm saying they need the candy either, but if you don't want to waste it, donate it or toss it out, right? It's candy. It's not doing really anybody any good. Um, you may have overbought candy, but you are not a human garbage disposal. Okay. So get yourself off the hook there. Um, have grace for yourself when that happens. Um, and just think, you know, I, I didn't meal plan. And so when I, I came home so hungry and I just grabbed the first thing, I grabbed that big bag of chips or I grabbed that uh, pint of ice cream, or half gallon of ice cream because I was so hungry and I just needed something. Um, so don't beat yourself up, but learn from it. No all or nothing thinking. So you know, oh, so I came home and I had that ice cream. Well, I just blew it. So I'm just going to keep going um, to the next thing and the next thing. And then your, your stomach is going to feel horrible. You're not going to sleep well that night. And I really think all are so many people say, oh, I have all or nothing thinking. Well, I'm, you know what, guys, I'm going to challenge you that it's kind of an excuse. Also, if it, it can also be an excuse to just let yourself go, right? It's, it's, it can also be an excuse. Um, so instead of that, it's like, well, how can I set myself? You know, if you are really focused on your why and your goals, you are going to try to keep up with your, with your healthy habits the best you can. And you're not going to let these things derail you in the long term. It's just about bouncing back even your next meal, right? And you are not a failure, my friend. 
you are human and you just did, you just went back to a default habit that you've had and you're just on your way to learning how to recreate new habits and it doesn't happen overnight. So keep on keeping on you guys, right? Number four, this to me is probably the best and most fun strategy is getting into community. It's really your best defense. Uh, we all need community. We need each other. Uh, we need to keep and more, even more important to me, a lot of people say, Lori, they come to me for coaching. They're like, I know what I need to do because I've been doing this for 10 years now, but I need someone to keep me accountable, which really what they're saying is I need for someone to keep me focused, right? I need to have someone else or a group that is trying to do the same goal. I need to stay focused and engaged with other people, right? And it makes it more fun. You know, when you're doing things and trying a new way of life, it doing it together, it just helps solidify a new lifestyle habit. It's like, it's like when you surround yourself with people who are, have the same goals, um, you, you can tend to think, well, everybody's doing this. Isn't everybody doing this? Everyone around me is doing this. And it's a good thing. So community is your best defense. And um, a study in 2018 uh, showed, you know, that people who are part of a support group, they lost almost eight pounds more in six months than people who weren't. It's just a, um, a more fun way. To, it's focus, right? It's focus. And it's they can help you bounce back. You have friends in this community that can help you bounce back, right? So choose your choose who you hang out with wisely. Who are you hanging out with? And this is in any area of your life. If you want to get promoted on your job, who are you hanging out with? Are you hanging out with the people at lunch who are gossiping during lunch, talking bad about your boss when that's really your bread and butter, right? Um, we need to, you know depending on who you hang out with, they're going to help you rise higher or stay the same where they want to stay the same or even take you down with them. So it's very important who you hang out with, right? Isn't that what we tell our kids? It's the same way uh, with adults. So with that, that was our fourth strategy. Um, so what was your biggest <laughs> takeaway uh, from today? And what will you implement this week? As a coach, I'm always asking that at the end of our sessions. What was your biggest takeaway and what are you going to implement? Because we want to set goals and keep moving forward. We want to have a focus, right? And keep moving forward. Okay. And just real quick, I wanted to mention this. Um, so if you're interested, you know, I was talking about the liver earlier. It's so important. If you are looking for something a little easier while you're making changes, um, reducing your sugars and all that, if you want, uh, something that is going to help your liver stay supported, this product longevity, I've been on it for about a year and a half. It's got this patented very powerful milk thistle ingredient. And if you Google milk thistle, you are gonna see that your liver loves milk thistle. Um, it's got other amazing patented um, ingredients in it. It's gonna boost your immune system. Um, it's gonna help your uh, lungs and all kinds of things. It really helps repair your body at the cellular level as well. It's a very powerful um, product. And uh, if you want more, just reach out to me and I can give you uh, new customers. You can get $10 off your first bottle to give it a try. This is something though you wanna be on for three to six months. People have had their carpal tunnel. Uh, it's gone, it's repaired. Um, you know, this person, electric light levels, um, really doing blood work. Uh, we'll show you what's going on inside my tri triglycerides and thyroid evened out. And it's, I've been fighting with those for a years, actually. 
uh, anyway, so if you're interested in that, contact me. The product is Modexas. Um, and other ways to stay in touch. If you're like, this was awesome. I learned a lot of things. I was reminded of some things. And I would love to dive deeper into my situation. Um, you know, I had to do this in my business. I was trying all the three, you know, I went to all these free webinars, right? Um, oh, this, you know, I'm going to try to fix it by going on to this free webinar. She's going to give me a lot of tips and this is going to help me. And then, oh, I'm going to try this one, right? And I tried all these free resources and nothing was really helping me advance. And so I said, you know what? I got to invest in myself. Um, and so you, your health is everything and you are priceless. And so if this was great and you're like, I'm going to try to implement these things. And if it's not working and you need the accountability or the support, I have two one-on-one -on -one coaching slots open. Um, these are for people, like it says, you've tried everything. You've tried all the free webinars, um, all of the diets, all of the food programs, and you're still gaining and finding those same pounds plus even more. You're fed up and you're really serious about wanting to break a barrier um, to lose weight for good, conquer those sugar cravings, to live a better quality of life and not go back. So um, contact me for that. Um, and we can talk about what that looks like. Um, also, so I am doing this webinar um, November of 2022. And so starting early December, just in a, a couple weeks or so, I am going to do a six week group, group again called Thriving Through the Holidays. Um, it's been really great. So what we do is we go from December until it ends up being the middle of January and we get through the holidays together. We learn, you know, hey guys, I have a party coming up. We all support each other. We give each other tips and uh, to help us stay focused during the holidays and into the new year. So by the time we're done with this group, we have created some new habits and um, we have not gained any weight. The goal is to not gain weight during the holidays, probably not to lose, but at least not gain and get through the new year on top instead of, you know, gaining weight and having to start back uphill January 1st. And there's a stat that that a, a friend shared with me too, that by January 17th, most people have quit their New Year's resolutions. They are fed up. And by just the middle of January, they stop. So let's you can do things differently. Um, sign up for my six-week group. So early bird pricing. So for those that are seeing this, um, I will be sending you an email with specific dates um, for early bird pricing on actually both. I'm going to give early bird pricing as well for people who are on this webinar um, on the coaching slots and thriving through the holidays. There'll be a price break for the next couple of days. And I, um, uh, you know, invest in yourself and make this a gift to yourself, right? It's a fun group. Um, and so if you're ready for change, I will give you my calendar link. So whether you purchase, um, this six week group, or you at least book a call within the next couple of days, you, if you want to do it, um, you know, the call will help see if it's right for you. And if you want to do it, you are going to get special pricing on either the coaching slot or the six week group. So those are some ways to stay in touch. Um, you will, uh, I'll keep you posted on what else is coming up. I'm going to do these webinars once, probably every couple months. Um, I, I have other programs and things going on throughout the year. So thank you so much for joining me. And um, you can contact me for more information anytime at Seeds of Change Nutrition dot com and you there's I have a contact page I have um on the home page if you scroll down you can sign up for my newsletter 
and stay in touch with everything that's going on here. You can also follow me at Seeds of Change Nutrition on Instagram and Facebook. So thank you so much. I hope you got a lot of value out of this. Um, thank you so much for joining me and have an amazing, amazing holiday season. Thanks, guys.